Uh, my name is Darren McGregor. I'm the engineering manager for Renko Controls. We're a business partner of Jensen Engineered Systems. We provide control panels. Um, in the engineer manager role, I uh, do anything from uh, overseeing spec reviews and quotes to actually doing programming of PLCs myself or panel design. We've got a staff of about a dozen guys that all do that back at the shop. This panel would be very typical for either a, uh, either a lift station application or a fresh water application where you're maintaining a certain pressure in a line. Uh, very common interfaces here for the typical operator. This is a, uh, it's a touch screen display also called an operator interface and this is basically the front end of the PLC that you can use to look at data as well as make changes. This particular one set up for a water boosting application dem demonstration. Uh, typical uh, parameters we're showing on this particular one would be like an intake pressure, system pressure. On a lift station it would be common to have a wet well depth or, or uh, drive speeds if needed. Uh, it's demonstrating drive speeds as well as uh, controller output. And usually you have to have some kind of, it's nice to have some kind of an alarm indicator on the note if there is an alarm. This particular one is, is common to what we do. If there is an alarm, you can hit the alarm status button. It'll tell you particularly what's an alarm. In this case, because we have both pumps and out of automatic, it's just warning you that there's nothing available for automatic if the case is needed. So I put those back to automatic. Nothing's an alarm. We go back to the main screen and that's, that's gone away. Um, it's also uh, the most common place to do your operator settings. For this particular one, you can to put uh, pressure start points, stop points, pump minimum speeds, uh, lag and lead start delays, things like that. Uh, we also tend to run with drives. We like to run the, uh, the manual function of the drive through the PLC as well because we can set our speeds as well here. It's kind of a one-stop shop for the operator. You can set everything he needs here instead of having to go into that to learn this as well as how to learn how to set speeds on the VFT itself. Um, typical things here for pump, pump applications, pump run lights and HOA switches, handoff auto. If you leave them in auto, it'll be running when the PLC decides it needs to run versus auto. If I switch it on, it'll turn the pump on immediately. So this is real common for operators, a uh, simple on-off operation for when they get to the site, if they need to deal something with something right now, they need to maintain pressure or turn a pump on, they can do it. Also typical is a high is a, an alarm button in front that's also got a combination push to silence button. And also a power light, just if you're walking by, if you don't notice the screen, you can see that it's running. Uh, this, this is a stainless steel box. It's fairly typical for this application. It's, a, it's called NEMA 4X. It's corrosion resistance. It's a little bit more than a standard NEMA 4, which would be a painted steel, but for long-term corrosion issues, uh, stainless steel a lot of times is preferred. The heart of a control panel, as far as logic goes, is the programmable logic controller. This particular one is made by Siemens, a big uh, automation company in, uh, worldwide. A uh, PLC is used to, to uh, basically control the system. It's the heart of, the, of, a, of a typical control panel. It's got a logic system in there that we designed specific for the project to look at the inputs, whether it be analog or digital, and control the outputs accordingly to maintain what systems it, it needs to do. This particular one is a Siemens S7200. It's got 14 inputs and 10 outputs on the digital side. As you'll see, the, there are LEDs on these to show which inputs are in use or, or are being lit up, so to speak, and then the outputs are also lit, so you know during troubleshooting, you can tell which inputs are made and which outputs are made, which is very helpful. This one also has an analog module, which will send analog signals in this particular case to the drives that are in the panel. These are uh, variable frequency drives. These particular ones are manufactured by a company called Danfoss. Uh, these are very common in lift station applications and uh, pressure boosting applications, most a lot of water applications. These particular ones, uh, the VLT series by Danfoss, are made to specifically for pump applications. Very simple. Um, what they do is they take 60 hertz power in and they're converting it to a different frequency to run the, the pump at a preset speed or a variable speed. Uh, these, for example, this one here, the output speed here, you can see it's actually running at 56.7 hertz. It's trying to maintain a certain pressure as, as told by the PLC. Uh, there's some simple operator controls in here that are, that are more easily used or more commonly used during startup. Uh, most of the other controls we actually run through the PLC as well as, as, as far as manual settings or operation or op automatic settings as well. But these particular ones are three horsepower units at 460 volts AC. So they'll run any pump up to three horsepower that's three phase 460. Um, terminal blocks are common for, uh, for all the, the wiring connections to and from the panel, whether they be sensors or pumps or what have you, or incoming power. Um, circuit protection, very common, uh, either circuit breakers or fuses, we have both in this. For the drives, we usually use a fuse to, to protect it from incoming line power. Circuit breakers are more common for uh, <clears throat> control circuits, uh, GFIs and things like that. This is uh, also common to these as a power supply. If, you're, if you have 120 volts coming in, 120 volts AC, you need to pr uh, provide 24 volts DC for a lot of uh, instrumentation as well as PLCs. And transformers are also common. If we've got a line voltage coming in of say 230 volts AC or 460, we need 120 for the control, so we'll step it down with the transformer as well. 
Uh, this particular one, you can add an Ethernet module onto it, which is common if you've got a SCADA application where there's a computer system that's actually monitoring this as well as other aspects of the job. And these will talk over uh, different communication mediums like Modbus TCP or uh, uh, DHCP, other things like that. So they're sending that data back to the computer system and has a graphic display that talks all about where the system's at. You can send data back and forth. Um, these are control relays. These are pretty common when you've got an output that gives a little bit of protection to the output. These are made by IDEC and they're typically made to handle an 8 to 10 amp load. Pretty common in our applications. From design to installation supervision to system warranty, your team at Jensen Engineered Systems is with you all the way.